Thank you to GM for sponsoring a portion of this video. All right, so I've been reviewing TVs for over a decade. I've been watching TV for much longer. Uh, but in that time reviewing these sets, about two and a half billion were sold worldwide. And of those, you got a ton of different acronyms. You got your OLEDs, your mini LEDs, even some cutie OLED thrown in there, and a ton more. And with every new TV technology that comes out, the landscape generally gets more confusing. But so far I've covered TV technology that like exists now, or like I saw it at CES, but there's a lot of new TV technology on the cusp of being available, or just being shown quietly behind closed doors what the next generation of TVs are gonna look like. I'm gonna pull back that curtain. I'm gonna show you what it's going to be. Let's start with what's coming to OLED. It's the king of TV technology, so of course it makes sense to continue to improve it, but it also might be the weirdest TV acronym to date. The next evolution of OLED will be FOLED, which stands for Phosphorescent Organic Light Emitting Diode. Now I can't say I'm particularly excited about saying FOLED uh, out loud in the future TV reviews, but the tech behind it Pretty insane, it will be worth it. I love the science technology behind this stuff, but I'm not gonna get too nerdy here into the physics of it, of what makes LEDs difficult to make. Blue LEDs specifically, mainly what you need to know is that the name of the game is just efficiency. So current OLED diodes use fluorescent lights that aren't very efficient. They only convert about 25% of electrical current that run through them to light. The other 75% is just like wasted heat. Phosphorescent OLED diodes convert nearly 100% of the electrical current that run through them, making the light incredibly more efficient. So the jump in efficiency from OLED to FOLED, I hate saying it, uh, will be greater than the jump from incandescent and fluorescent bulbs to LEDs. So FOLED is a really big deal. But how does all this translate to OLED TVs? Uh, FOLED will allow OLED TVs to get insanely bright. Not just by like a tiny little bit, we're talking 300% brighter. That means FOLED TVs will be significantly brighter while using way less power, and burn-in will officially completely go away, becoming something that just lives in the past. This also means that the diodes in FOLED TVs will degrade much slower so your TV will last even longer. And if I've learned anything over the years, lasting longer is better. Not only that, but FOLED TVs will be able to come in much larger sizes, and it'll take less power to drive the diodes, so I expect to see some wall-filling sizes become a reality. All oh, the prices will probably be like a house. And this isn't some like crazy future tech. Uh, current OLEDs are using just a tiny little taste of what FOLED can be, but you're not getting a full FOLED experience. That's because blue is really hard to do. Now I could get real nerdy with the technology, but the folks at Veritasium did a much better job explaining it than I ever could. So if you wanna get your physics on, uh, I'll link to that down below. Out of all the technologies here, FOLED is the closest to becoming a thing you can actually buy. And we could see these sets as early as 2025. So when I head to CES this coming year, it would not be surprising to see companies taking their first stab at a brand new, insanely bright, full-led TV that they'll probably call some insane acronym. All right, next up we have micro-LED. Now you probably think that this is just an evolution of mini-LED, just, you know, smaller. But micro-LED is actually an evolution of OLED technology. I told you these acronyms are very confusing. Now this isn't like future tech, this exists today. It is just insanely expensive. Uh, average cost in these displays are over $100,000, and Samsung will happily sell you a 146 inch micro LED 4K TV called The Wall for almost a quarter of a million dollars. So currently companies like Samsung, Sony, and LG are primarily using these displays for like ultra premium signage and commercial applications. So for context, currently micro LED panels are manufactured between 10.1 and 14.6 inches and cost anywhere from $5,000 to $10,000 to make each panel. Then those panels are then laid like tiles next to each other to create a larger grid to create kind of a seamless looking display that can go to 100 plus inches. So you can quickly see why those 100,000 price tags come very fast. And while the tech is here now, the price probably won't come down to consumer levels for I would imagine five to on the long end of 10 years. 
But when that price does come down to normal human levels, what you think about TVs in your home could be very different. Your TV is not gonna come in a giant box. It's like one huge panel anymore. Your panel will come in stacks of kind of like iPad sized screens that you'll attach to a much larger frame. Uh, effectively, TVs don't necessarily have to have size limits anymore. As long as you can afford it, you just buy more panels and you can get the TV as big as you want and just keep adding to your existing grid. Now it's not likely the TV manufacturers will sell them to individual panels like that, but it's technically possible given how the technology works. So in addition to just a huge increase in size capabilities, the brightness of these sets will have a gigantic increase over TVs that you can get now. Typically what's considered a bright OLED display is around like 2,000-ish nits, and that's plenty bright enough to put a TV in a bright room built with a ton of light, and not have to worry about the picture looking dim or washed out. Research labs have been able to produce micro LED brightness levels of 2.8 million nits. So, you know, obviously a lot brighter. And granted, these levels are like isolated R&D projects meant to show the upper limits of the technology, but it's not like that will be possible on like a large scale. Reality, micro LED TVs practical limits probably be in the 10,000 nit range, which is obviously five times the current brightness uh, of most LEDs. But as the tech advances and gets more efficient, as a result, micro LED TVs could go beyond the 10,000 nit range. I don't know for certain what kind of TV tech you're gonna have in your house in a few years, but I do know the TV that you've got there right now has gotta be plugged in. If you ever have a power outage and you can't watch what you wanna watch, what are you gonna do? The folks at GM have a really awesome, elegant solution. I gotta go to probably one of the nicest houses that I've ever seen in my entire life in Beverly Hills to check out GM Energy's new solutions. And they were doing it using one of their new Ultium powered cars, the Beast Mode Silverado EV RST was a first edition. This thing's got a 200 kilowatt hour battery pack, uh, but you can use that kilowatt hours for more than just getting from point A to point B. GM Energy created a whole solution where you can use your car to provide power to your house in case you're experiencing an outage. It really is an elegant solution, and this vehicle to home setup will work with more than just Chevy and Silverado EV. It'll actually work with all compatible GM Ultium cars. Things like Cadillac Lyric, uh, the upcoming Escalade, IQ, the Chevy Blazer EV, the Equinox EV, and then more uh, as they come out. And they're trying to build out more than just that. They're going to have home battery packs coming out soon and even solar integration. So kind of everything you would need for your home. And they showed a live demonstration. They killed the power to the house and the truck was powering everything. First of all, the truck looked incredible. So once I got my eyes off of that, it was really cool to see this work. And it was a very sort of technical thing that was explained very easily. You've got all those kilowatt hours sitting in your garage. You might as well use it in case of an outage. And GM is making all this possible with GM Energy. If you wanna learn more, check it out, or even order it for yourself because it's available right now. Just hit the link down below. And a big thank you to GM for sponsoring this portion of the video. All right, so just like FOLED is the evolution to OLED, Nano LED is the evolution to QLED tech. Now currently QLED and QD OLED TVs place a quantum dot layer over their backlit panels or their diode arrays. This allows for light shine through that filter to produce brighter and more vibrant colors. But what makes Nano LED so special is it eliminates the need for that backlight altogether. Instead, all electrical current is fed directly to the quantum dot filter to produce its own light. This gives nano LED two major advantages. The first, it could end up being even brighter than micro LED. Researchers behind that tech claim it could produce upwards of 600,000 nits, but just like micro LED, probably not gonna see those numbers anywhere close to practical use. But I do believe that when this technology comes out, they'll be the brightest sets on the market and it'll probably stay that way for a while. Second benefit will be flexibility because it doesn't have a backlight. You're not limited to a like a rigid form. Companies that currently make rollable displays and foldable displays are seeing nano LED as like the holy grail of flexible panels. An even crazier possible application to nano LED is placing it in your clothing. And if you're like me, when I find a shirt or jacket that I like, Generally buy the same thing in multiple colors. You can look at my videos and it's like, there's a gray one, there's a black one, a blue one. But perhaps decades in the future, you have to buy just one 
if you like make a different color, you can just change the color or the graphic like you would change a channel. As for when we'll see nano LED projections, say we could see it as early as 2025 in super early forms, but to get to those practical consumer levels and applications, this technology uh, is probably the farthest out of anything on that list. And then perhaps the most like out there of them all, there's Tandemolet. So if you don't know, Apple introduced a new take on OLED display technology, and by new I mean like just new in the name. So LG Display actually came up with this technology back in 2019 and called it two-stack tandem structure OLED, where two layers of OLED diodes are stacked on top of one another to push out more brightness, and even greater contrast in very brightly lit scenarios. So oddly enough, LG made this technology first available in cars, so the display didn't get washed out, it could be seen better when you were driving. But in typical Apple fashion, it took an existing technology, put some cool animations on screen, and claimed it as a revolutionary new technology. But since Apple put its stamp of approval, on the display technology. Will we see new OLED TVs with this tandem OLED technology anytime soon? Sadly, the answer is probably not. The price of making displays with tandem structures is still really high and are not nearly as energy efficient as something like FOLED. So I suspect we won't see tandem OLED TVs out for a very long time, but now it's technology that Apple's out there marketing, maybe that'll be enough for companies to try and do it themselves in a different way. But again, I doubt we'll see this technology in TVs anytime soon. And if you look at TVs now, like the best QD OLED set versus what TVs looked like 10 years ago, you know, the flagship plasma set of a decade ago, that jump is drastic. Uh, a decade in the tech world might as well be a hundred years. So to imagine what TVs are gonna look like five or 10 years from out is incredible. And when I talk about all these nits and this crazy amount of brightness, it's not going to sear your eyes out, but you are going to get our brighter colors. You're gonna get darker blacks. Things will start to look more realistic. And you don't have to think of a TV as just a big giant rectangle anymore. What we think of a TV is going to change. And the technology that's going to make it is not even that far off. And there's any technology in the world that gets me excited, it is this TV technology. I just wanna see what comes next. It's one of my favorite things about going to CES. And I think we're finally on the cusp seeing something totally new.